she brought it home from school. Teresa Shingus holds a Mother's Day gift her daughter Ashley made years ago. A loving person. Ashley went missing in March 2022 at 31 years old. The following year, Winnipeg police shared this updated photo of Ashley and how she could look. Around that same time, community patrols hit the streets for leads, but none went anywhere, and then silence, until this summer during the trial of Jeremy Skibitsky. When we went to that court, they said to us that they had a DNA on the cigarette, but they found that in that guy's home. During the trial, it was revealed there were 16 female DNA profiles found inside Skibitsky's apartment. Now, this doesn't mean they were all victims of foul play, but in court, an investigator on the stand said they were still looking into finding the identity of nine of those women. Last month, Skibitsky was found guilty of four first-degree murders for Rebecca Contois, Morgan Harris, Mercedes Myron, and a yet-to-be-identified individual given the name Mascude Bejieque, or Buffalo Woman. Looking at her daughter's ID. She sent it back when she was, she said, Mom, I don't want to lose my, my ID cards. Teresa talks about when news about Buffalo Woman became public in late 2022. She and her husband were swabbed for DNA but some weeks later, they learned they weren't a match. After hearing in court about Ashley's DNA in that apartment, Albert says police contacted him. What they were saying to me, we're not, we're not giving up yet. After the trial in that room, they might go and see that person again mm -hmm. and ask them questions. Winnipeg police won't confirm what Albert is saying, but they do say Ashley's case is still an active missing persons investigation. Often, timelines of missing persons cases are hard to trace. The Shingu's family knows this, as they too struggle with their own memories as time passes. Albert recalls the last time he saw his daughter. She was uh, slim. She had long hair. At the time, he was living in Winnipeg's core and going to treatment. He ran into her at a convenience store and invited her to his place. She stepped against, almost against by my door. Hey, yeah. Uh, and she stayed with me that one night. When he woke up the next morning, she was gone. He can't remember the exact day, only there was COVID restrictions at the time. By then, Ashley was transient, her family said, after fleeing domestic violence. Her two older kids were already back in St. Teresa Point, living in the family home, her youngest child she had while living in the city, in care of child and family services. I should have went out and picked her up. With a childhood photo of Ashley and their three other kids on the table, they talk about why Ashley left St. Teresa Point around 2016. We're overcrowded in each house. Is, we don't have enough room for anybody. In the St. Teresa Anishinaabe Nation, there's roughly 300 houses for about 3,500 people. That means there is often three or four generations living in one home. In the Shingu's home, there were 15 people in the house when Ashley left. I want to have my own a place where I can look after my kids, she said. A vision her mother didn't want to interfere with. Now all these years later, Teresa faces her own spiritual visions. The Creator had her already. I'll say it's a dream. Mm -hmm. But it's so very real. In October, a search will begin at this landfill on the outskirts of Winnipeg for Morgan Harris and Mercedes Myron, two of the four women that Skibitsky killed. Albert believes his daughter may have ended up here too. If she's in a landfill, we'll be fine. He's anxious for this week's sentencing hearing for Skibitsky to be over because Albert believes the police will continue to press Skibitsky about Ashley. Now and then I cry. Now and then I get frustrated. Now and then I get mad. As the family waits and holds on to one of the few physical memories left. I love you, love Ashley. Pierre Wheatley, APTN National News, Winnipeg.